In this first video, we're going to take a broad overview look at some of the pieces of the adaptive immune response. So by way of reminder, when the immune system um, is protecting us, which there are components of it that are protecting all the time, it starts with our innate immunity. Innate meaning inborn. Uh, think of it as always on, always active, always protecting, and very importantly, nonspecific. Innate immunity doesn't particularly care what the pathogen is. If it doesn't look like self, it's going to do its best to keep it out. We break that down typically into two lines of defense. In the first line of defense, we've got intact skin, mucous membranes, and then our normal flora, always protecting us. And again, doesn't really care much what the pathogen is. Second line of defense. So assuming a pathogen gets past one of these first lines of defense, our second line of defense is still somewhat nonspecific. We have nonspecific phagocytosis. If you remember, that relies on toll-like receptors on the surface of our phagocytes and recognizing pathogen-associated molecular patterns on various pathogens. So it is still nonspecific, um, but it doesn't, uh, doesn't begin protecting until the first lines of defense have been breached. We have complement and interferon, two antimicrobial protein categories, and then systemic responses of inflammation and fever. Now, assuming a pathogen gets past those first two lines of defense, which we know at some frequency they do because most of us get sick at least a couple times every year, then our adaptive immune system kicks in, our third line of defense. Adaptive immunity is also sometimes called acquired immunity because it is so highly specific to a particular pathogen that it is not on, not up and running until you've been exposed to that pathogen tends to be a little slow in responding. If you notice most illnesses, your, your general infections take a week to 10 days to clear, and that's largely because it takes roughly a week or so, five to seven days, for our adaptive immunity to get ramped up and start working effectively on the infection. Now your adaptive immunity is highly specific immunity, um, very different from the innate system. And we're gonna see that it's the lymphocytes, the B cells and the T cells, that are essential to this whole process. Now we tend to divide the adaptive immune response into two different categories, two different uh, features that are often working together. And the first is what we call cell-mediated immunity. And this is relying on our cytotoxic T cells. We also have helper T cells that are involved in both cell-mediated and antibody-mediated, but the cytotoxic T cells are there to go after intracellular pathogens, pathogens that are growing and dividing inside host cells and therefore hidden from the rest of our immune system. Cell-mediated immunity is all about those cytotoxic T cells going after them. The other branch of the adaptive immune system is what we call antibody-mediated immunity. Some books will call it humoral immunity. Uh, this relies on B cells. B cells secrete antibodies. And then the purpose of the antibodies is to opsonize or flag a foreign organism or foreign particle like a toxin for destruction by our phagocytes. Now, in our innate immunity, we learned that, um, that phagocytes can, in fact, non-specifically go after pathogens using their toll-like receptors. But when we opsonize a pathogen with complement and antibodies, we dramatically increase the effectiveness of phagocytosis. This is a really big piece for our overall immunity. Antibody-mediated immunity is critical for pathogens that are in the extracellular environment, okay? So if you've got an intracellular pathogen, it's gonna be hidden from antibodies until it bursts the cell and escapes. Once it bursts, then the antibodies can get involved and, and phagocytes can get involved. If you've got a pathogen that never grows intracellularly, like many of our bacterial pathogens don't do, um, then the antibody-mediated branch is going to be the heart and soul of this whole thing. Now, T cells are involved in both. Helper T cells are communicating cells, we're going to see, that can direct the cytotoxic T cells and activate them, and they can direct the uh, B cells and activate them as well. So these are the pieces and components of the adaptive immune system. One last thing I want to talk about in this overview are antigens, abbreviated AG. Antibodies are abbreviated AB. An antigen is something that generates 
an antibody response. In other words, it stimulates an immune response. These are molecules, mostly proteins and polysaccharides, and proteins are better antigens that elicit an immune response. So what kinds of proteins and polysaccharides can you think of that would be exposed um, so that uh, uh, B cells could begin producing antibodies directed against them? Here's some examples on bacteria, anything that's on the surface. So capsular polysaccharides and proteins, uh, fimbriae, um, peptidoglycan, uh, uh, flagellar proteins, all of these are going to be exposed on the outside of a bacterial cell, and therefore they could serve uh, as antigens, keeping in mind that protein antigens tend to be more effective than polysaccharide antigens. On the right, we've got an enveloped helical virus, and the only thing that's going to be exposed there are going to be the protein spikes. Um, there's very few uh, sugars, uh, polysaccharides involved, and so those protein spikes are going to be the key antigens. If we've got a naked virus, on the other hand, it's going to be our capsomere proteins and uh, tail fibers, the attachment fibers, uh, that are going to be mostly exposed. I also want to comment that bacterial toxins, because they are proteins, can actually serve as good antigens. And we can create an antibody response against the toxins themselves and neutralize those toxins so they're ineffective by simply wrapping them up, uh, literally, in a bunch, of, uh, a bunch of antibodies. Okay, so maybe watch this video one more time. Have your book out with you. Take some notes. Make sure this overview big picture makes sense to you. And then in the next video, we're going to start looking at some more uh, specific, uh, specific pieces to this overall adaptive response.